this first part of the tutorial, we're going to build the skeleton for this user interface. Three buttons at the top, a few at the bottom, and also a text field that describes the current uh, dot size of the lines. In the original app, we had a cat. I've replaced this with a dog, uh, but you can use any picture you want while building your app. We're going to start off by building a new project. And we're back with a fresh new project. I'm using Android 2.2 for this particular uh, application and it's a much nicer design environment than the older Android Studio 2.0. But one thing that's kind of awkward about it is that the default layout view for 2.2 happens to be this constrained layout which is far more complicated than the relative layout that we prefer to use for beginners. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a change to this XML file and switch back to the relative layout that we're more comfortable with. So to do that I'm going to come over here where it says constrained layout and replace this with relative layout. And we're not going to need these uh, text view items over here and we need to change the ending tag to be relative layout like that. And now we're back to having the familiar layout that we used for our previous applications. Now I've clicked on this design button to switch to the WYSIWYG design mode and we're going to start off by putting some buttons up here and some buttons at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to start by placing four buttons up here. And uh, what we're going to do with these is we're going to put the red, green, and blue, and we're going to put the erase button up here. And then down here we'll put in the controls for controlling the line thickness. Let me see if I can make these look a little bit nicer. And I just wanted to space the buttons out a little bit. One of the nice features of the newer Android 2.2, Android Studio, is that the properties view is much less cluttered than before. Only the important properties are presented and if you want to look at more of the detailed properties you click on this little thing here and it shows you the more detailed view. But most of the time this is all we need so it's nice to not have to deal with the clutter. We're going to change the names of some of these buttons. This button we're going to call the red button. And we're going to put the word red here. And I'm going to go ahead now and do the same for some of these other buttons. Okay, I've changed the names of the labels as well as the button names in the code. And now we're going to place a couple of items on the bottom of the screen. Uh, we're going to start with two buttons. One is going to be for the plus and the minus. I'll just put those over here. And then we're going to use a text view to show the dot size. like that. Okay, I've gone ahead now and uh, changed the button labels and we've changed the text here to default to say dot size. Uh, one additional change we want to make to this particular uh, item here is we want to center this. So I'm going to bring up the more complicated um, set of properties and we're going to change this property called text alignment and I'm going to just center it. And you can see that the dot size now is uh, properly centered. Eventually we're going to add another view class over here with the background image of the cat or the dog. But right now let's go ahead to our code and create a skeleton for each of these buttons and get them to work. I'm back in the main activity Java file and this is going to be the place where we're going to handle the pressing of all the buttons. Now previously in this course we've already discussed how we can use anonymous inner classes to handle button presses. For this particular activity, however, we're going to go back to the old-fashioned way of handling button presses by making the class itself the button click listener. The reason we're doing this is that for our user interface, you can see that the screen is going to have a large number of buttons and other widgets on it, 
And the job of the main activity file here is almost entirely going to consist of dealing with these buttons. So it will make our code uh, significantly shorter if we uh, create an action listener directly in this class instead of creating a separate one for every single button. So to make this class aware of button clicks, I'm going to implement Now you can see that I have two choices for on click listener and one of the other annoying things about the new Android 2.2 is that the top one is not the one we want. We want this one for the view class. And now we're going to implement the methods. And we're going to put all our action handling of the buttons in here. Let's now create some state variables for our class. going to take each of these Java variables and associate them with their corresponding layout variables. I've gone ahead now and associated the red button variable on the Java side with its corresponding one on the layout side. I'm going to now do the same thing for the other buttons. As you can see, I have added associations for all the other buttons now as well. And here I have declared that the current class is going to handle each of the on-click listeners for these buttons. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the Java code to handle this text view. Okay, I've gone ahead and associated the text view dot size with its layout variable, and I've put a note in here that after we set up the view class, we're going to have to put a line of code in here that's going to allow us to initialize this value on the screen as soon as the app initializes. For the final part of this tutorial, we're going to develop the switch statement for this on click listener that's going to get called every time a button is pressed. So when the red button gets pressed, we're going to log a message into the debug console saying that the button was pressed and we're going to also print the label of the button. In this case, it's going to print the word red since that's what's written on the button label. Up here, what we've done is we've created a temporary button to figure out which button got pressed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this case structure and we're going to repeat it for each of the other buttons. Now we're in a position to test the skeleton of our code. As each button gets pressed on the screen, we want to make sure that the corresponding button label is printed on the debug console. So let's run our app and see what we have so far. The emulator is now running and you can see that the screen shows the four buttons on the top and the two control buttons on the bottom. And if I press the red button, you can see I get a message showing up here saying that the red button was pressed. Likewise, if I press the blue button, green, the reset, the plus, and the minus, you can see that all the buttons are now working. And we've been able to test that we have the skeleton of our user interface built without having written any code for our application yet. Before we leave this tutorial, Let's change the background colors of each of these three buttons.